Hey folks, how y'all doing in, in, in the land of grills? You should see me sometimes when I stand out here in the garage deciding which grill I'm gonna cook on. It's, sometimes it, it takes forever and I go through it in my head and the scenarios. So today I decided to pull out the acorn and uh, just, I've got some uh, beef short ribs and uh, it's gonna be perfect for that. Uh, I was really debating between the PK or the char griller and some of you would say, well, Tom, why don't you do a uh, comparison? And that's a really good idea. Huh. I think uh, challenge accepted. Let's, uh, I got I got six short ribs. We'll do three on here. Three on there. All right, let, let's take a look at the setup. And I know a lot of you are saying like, hey, you know, that's a Kamado type cooker. This is not a Kamado, PK is not but they both do a phenomenal job of indirect. And that's what I wanted to see today to help you. If you're sitting there going, you know, which one of these should I get? I'm really into indirect cooking. And uh, would a Kamado do better than the PK? And I honestly don't know. I just had this idea. Why don't we just compare the two? And, and I know it's like, it's not against Kamado, against Kamado, but I, okay, you know what I'm saying. Jell Stella we're gonna use, we're gonna use lump in the PK, which I've never done. Uh, and I've got two little pieces of mesquite. We are gonna use our, I uh, don't wanna get you dizzy here, but we are gonna use our loop lighter. They get them both started that way. I can kind of even out and get them started both the same amount. Uh, I'm gonna start in the middle, I'll start in the middle. I've got the same thing in here, the, the uh, Jealous Devil lump in there and um, two pieces of mesquite. Uh, we're gonna put a water pan on the stone. Now remember on the acorn, you got, you got a stone, it's up there. And I'm gonna put the water pan on there, grates on the um, three pieces of uh, short ribs, uh, you know, above the stone. Same thing over here, water pan underneath with water in it. And then uh, our three short ribs right there. I think this is gonna be interesting. Uh, and we're just gonna see, you know, I, it's, it's not about which one cooks it faster. Uh, it's about which one is gonna give you a better smoke profile or better taste profile. And uh, that, that's what's going to be, that's what we're really looking at today. So let's, enough of that. Let's get her fired up. I pretty much got the setup complete on the PK grates on. Got my pan in there. I'm going to put some warm water in there. Charcoal started two mesquite pieces in there. I got to put my grate on there, my stone on there. And then, but I just want to show you how I got the setup there. You can see a little, I started it down below low with the loof lighter. Uh, one thing I noticed, this is the first time using a loof lighter with a lump charcoal. It takes, a start, it takes longer to start a lump with that thing than it does with briquettes. Briquettes, I was seeing sparks, they're like 40 seconds. Uh, with this Jealous Devil stuff, it was like a minute and a half, but still works, still works very nice. And I was able to control how much I started and uh, I got them pretty much even. Uh, so um, we're gonna get it to final setup and get the ribs on. All right, so <clears throat> there's our beef short ribs. That's what I've trimmed off with mostly some hard fat and a little bit of silver skin on top. And it's not perfect, folks. You don't have to get it perfect. Um, I, I'm using this uh, Drippies, barbecue Drippies prep tub. And what I like about it, it's actually got a cutting board built into it. And it expands up one more level, but this just makes it so much easier to work with. And for seasoning today, I'm just going to go with one. I'm going to go with this Boar's Night Owl White Lightning Double Garlic Butter. And I am just going to get all surfaces except for the bottom, which is the bone down there. I, I don't want to get that. So we're just going to get the sides real good. And you can put this on, it's beef, so you can put it on as heavy as you want. But um, that's about all I'm going to do there. And you can see we got some smaller ones, which will probably cook up a little bit faster than the bigger ones. That just makes sense, right? So I'll continue on here get these real good and um, let them sit for a bit and then onto the grill they'll go. I got the ribs on both, uh, been on for about 10 minutes now. I had the vents wide open on the Kamado, just throw out on the back, temp is coming up quick. I, I really want to catch it before it gets too high and you can see our vent configuration, the bottom vent there is just cracked, uh, top vent is uh, just open also and uh, on this char griller you You've got to play with this, figure it out. On the um, PK, there's the fire on this side, top vent closed, bottom vent wide open. On the indirect side where the meat is, I've got the bottom vent closed, top vent open. That is your, uh, that is how you do indirect on the PK. You can see 
just coming up the temp there. So we'll take a quick look. Okay. And we'll look at, at the acorn here. Okay. So we will keep these shut down for a while now. If anything, I'll just play with the vents a little bit to get them where I want and then give you a look, see maybe in about an hour. All right, one hour. Um, the PK finally made it to about 225, at least on the gauge. It says 225. First time cooking with lump on there, so uh, eh, a little worried about that. The the acorn I've been throttling back now. Uh, ambient temperatures outside today are, it's in the 30s. I've got wind coming from this direction right at me, but, eh, about 10, 15 miles an hour, you can see that. We'll take a look at the acorn. I'm actually expecting the acorn to be a little bit further along than the PK, to be honest with you. Let's take a look. Oh man, we got pullback one on the bones already. Like I said, those are looking nice. And uh, the acorn is uh, definitely dialed in. Let's take a look at the PK. Same thing, you, you see I've got vent wide open, bottom vent closed, we talked about it before. Fires on this side, top vent closed, bottom vent open that allows everything. And this, like I said, this is a 225 machine. Oh yeah, got some good color there. Getting a little bit of pullback, but the uh, acorn is definitely further along than the PK. Uh, but you know what? They're two different styles of cookers, so it's it's all about at the end how they turn out. And uh, right now, that's going to get done first, uh, as opposed to the PK. And uh, give you a couple more look sees. All right, two and a half hours into it, let's take a look at our short ribs here. Take a look at the char grill acorn first. Oh man, this thing's that's ready to start probing. Probe tender is what we're going to go to. Cover back up. Probably probe it. PK, let's check the PK. I did add some more lump after the last showing just to kind of kick it a little bit. And that's looking pretty good too. Getting a little pull back. This is definitely not as far along as the uh, acorn is, but it's, it's doing a good job too. Let's uh, give you a couple more look sees and uh, show you when they're plated up. All right, so the char grill are the ones that are done first. I'll show you what I mean by toothpick tender. You just take a toothpick in there and uh, they should go in and out, which it does nice and easy. Same thing for these. A little, little bit of resistance there, but I'm gonna wrap this aluminum foil. It'll continue cooking. And then um, the PK ones, I think are about 30 minutes, 30 to 45 minutes behind. I'll give you a look, see when you pull those off. All right, about 35 minutes later, they're off the PK. Uh, nice looking color on there. And toothpick test is a little grabbing on just a little bit. Oh my goodness, toothpick broke. Yeah, there's a little, so we're gonna wrap them. We'll wrap them about 10 minutes and give you a look, see at the final product. All right, done resting, uh, there they are. You see the color looks almost identical on both of them. Um, probably a little bit darker on the acorn as opposed to the PK. Uh, bones come pretty much right out. Here's on the acorn. Oh, this one <laughs> actually comes right off. This one too comes right off. Got a nice little uh, nice smoke ring. Take a taste test. It's still warm. Oh, hot, hot, hot. Mmm. As you can see, this off the acorn. It's been a while since I had short ribs because they've been hard to find and they're ex so expensive, but nice smoke ring and nice and juicy. So let's, uh, let's come on over to the PK. Right, nice color. Bone comes right off. This is still hot too. Oof -da. Pulling off of this one. Yeah, ooh, hot, hot, hot. Nice smoke ring, beautiful smoke ring. Open that up a little bit more. All right, here's here's a good push, and I don't understand this because I had the mesquite on there, but here's the acorn, and I, I got a little bit of a smoke ring. But here's the PK. Look at that smoke ring. That is, uh, and I don't know why that would uh, make a difference there, but uh, definitely more of a smoke ring on the PK than there was on the acorn. All right, so I had a, ch a chance to taste both. And, you know, if you're looking, you can see there is there, there, a little bit more pronounced smoke ring, definitely more of a smoke ring on the PK as opposed to the acorn. That could have been 
user here. I don't know. It's the same charcoal, the same the same uh, same amount of uh, chunks of uh, the mesquite. So both tender. I, you know, I I do have to say that I had to let these rest a little longer while I was waiting for these to catch up, and uh, I did cover them with aluminum foil and I did put a little bit of a uh, uh, beef broth in there and put them in the oven on uh, just on warm because I didn't want these to dry out so that that could have something to do with it too but they're both extremely extremely good but uh, I think what we need to go do is go to, over to the PK and the acorn and talk a little bit more because everybody's going to want to know which one would I choose all right so before we get to my final choice I just want to talk a little bit about ash management and uh, the PK's got a little bit of a, I'm not gonna say it's an issue, but I'm using the PK charcoal basket and on these longer cooks, and as long as you know it's gonna happen, you can always get in there and fix it. But uh, what'll happen is the ash will sit on that basket and plug the holes. So, you know, after about the first hour and a half to two hours, you gotta go in there and just, uh, I, I, I just use a charcoal rake and I just rake back and forth to get that ash to fall through those holes because it, it'll block up and it actually will, uh, you, if you saw, I was struggling a little bit with temp and uh, that was the reason. Uh, so, but as long as you know that, you know, you can always go in there every hour and a half, shake it up a little bit. A lot of people say they don't like that uh, charcoal basket and on longer cooks, they cook right on the uh, charcoal grate. And that might not be a bad idea. Just, uh, I, I need to do a cook where I don't use that charcoal grate at all and just cook directly uh, on the original charcoal grate that comes with the grill. So uh, enough said about ash management. This thing does just fine when it comes to ash management and no, no issues there. All right, so I always get asked is, you know, if you had, could only have one, which one would it be? You know, I, you gotta look at so many factors here. Cost, this is 300, it's a little bit more than 300. Uh, this will last forever. These things, you, you'll get, if you take care of them and store them inside and that, you get three to five years out of them, uh, but uh, they they won't last forever like that will. Um, what's got more capacity? That's not even fair because this has got more capacity than that. Uh, this one, in my opinion, made a little bit better spare rib. I mean, short rib, short rib, as opposed to that. But that could be operator error. So once again, if you ask me which one would I choose, I'd take them both. But I, I, I know that's 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 a cop out. You can't do that, Tom. You gotta pick one. I, if I were to pick one, yeah, I, I'm I'm sorry, PK. I love you, and I'll always cook on you. But uh, if I had to pick between the two of you, and knowing what this thing can do, you know, and uh, the capacity of it, and you've got that upper rack. I mean, you get the upper racks for that, but the capacity is going to be more. Once again, not fair. But uh, I honestly believe in the long run, you'd get more use out of the char grill or acorn. The PK is a specialty type grill. Uh, it, and I know a lot of people argue with me with that, but it, but it just is. I only use it for indirect, smaller indirect, and it does a phenomenal job. You'll see me out here in the dead of winter when it's really, really cold because this thing does a great job. Now, can this do that in the dead of winter? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's double, ins it's insulated. It's, you know, it's got all the same things. It's just that it's got that egg shape and works just a little bit better that and some things all around i'll pick that if i'm just looking for a specialty type indirect smaller indirect cooking this thing all day long but if i had to pick between the two i'm going to go with the char griller folks hope this was helpful leave your comment which which one of these two would you pick tom horseman at youtube thumbs up leave a comment and as always appreciate you watching